Hi everybody and welcome back again to my channel. I have missed all of you and I'm so glad to be back and I want to take the time to thank all of you who reached out privately and even on the channel to know how I'm doing, to know if, if everything is fine and yes everything is fine because we are thankful for the mercies of God that are new every morning. So on that note everything is fine of course life challenges derailed my messages for some time but uh hopefully that will not happen again by the grace of god so i want to once again emphasize the mission of this channel is to shed the light of god the light of the gospel of jesus christ on darkness one that i just walked away from and i cannot thank god enough for also shining the light on the darkness that I was walking in and I want to of course pay it forward by sharing the gospel with anybody who is interested in listening. My background of course as a former Jehovah's Witness creates an authentic point of view, an authentic frame of reference for doing this and I simply want to take the time to say this is not to bash the religion, rather it is to throw light on it and say mm, this and that did not really align with the teachings of the Bible. So this is not my, these are not my words, but the words of the living God through his holy Bible. So with that said, today's episode is focused on sharing my personal experience, why I did not believe in Jesus Christ. I couldn't have. It's not that I knew who he was. And rejected or denied him and this is the particular darkness that people who come from where I am coming also walked in or are still walking in so on that note when people come out of the religion and they are looking for the truth some of them are so angry that so much was mistaught that they don't even care to learn the truth but if you're among those who care to really dig a little deeper and do your own work because our salvation is personal this is a resource for you i encourage you to do your own study straight from the bible not even from any youtube channel the bible comes before my channel the bible comes before before any book the bible comes before any teacher or pastor and of course there's also a teacher that the Bible has brought up for you. And we will learn about that as we proceed. So without further ado, let me go straight into the scriptures to share why I couldn't have believed in Jesus Christ based on the foundation that I received from birth. The first thing I want to point out is from the scriptures saying that I was taught, first of all, from a translation that had been tampered with. Many verses of the Bible had been removed, altered, or added. And I've talked about this before in a former video where I talked about the uh, New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, which is the name or the translation that we used as Jehovah's Witnesses. And as I began to read the Bible, I was prompted to consult other translations and theirs was completely far from what the rest are saying because the bible had been tampered the one that i was exposed to i just couldn't have known the truth at all i couldn't have had the unadulterated word of god delivered to me from childhood the next reason the next reason that i could not have known the word of god is because it was taught to me from publications of Jehovah's Witnesses. So you would have, I always argued when I was a Jehovah's Witness that, oh, we read the Bible, we believe in the Bible, we use the Bible every day. And that is the truth. Every Jehovah's Witness reads the Bible every day. But they took a backdoor approach, and I'll tell you how. They present them with multiple publications and then quote sporadic scriptures to justify the doctrine. And so you find yourself upholding the doctrines and being immersed in the doctrines. Some call it brainwashing. I would definitely agree because you have been indoctrinated or you have been taught to align your arguments, your thought process, your belief system, and of course your frame of reference or experiences with the doctrines 
that have digressed from the authentic teaching of the Bible. And if you think otherwise, ask yourself, why do you have to be fed through these books? Why is it that every Sunday when you go to meeting, you read Watchtower? And then during your midweek meeting, you, as they call it, not service or church, they say midweek meeting. Why is it that during those services or times, you do not read straight from the Bible? You are still reading their own publications that sporadically quote the Bible. We were often told, oh, to read the Bible on our own. And then when you read it, you are reading it as a group. You are reading it as a group. So they might tell you today you're reading Numbers chapter 1 uh, and chapter 2, and they give it as an assignment to someone, and that person will read it. And then they coach you. They, they respond to those scriptures based on the doctrines. So the, it was very guided and shielded, the exposure we got. So keep in mind, you're in this meeting, you're not allowed to critically think. You're not allowed to have your own frame of reference or interpretation based on plain language. You will read it and then somebody says thank you and maybe they point out a few things and actually grade you. They grade you based on that. They have maybe your communication, eye contact as you read and all of that. So how is it that you being graded by standards that classroom teachers use how is it that you will actually learn the scriptures in its truth? So if you think I'm lying, attend one of their midweek meetings or even their Sunday service, you will see that it's pretty much like a classroom. It's tailored like a classroom. And so that is the second reason. The first reason is that the Bible has been tampered. Their own version of the Bible has been tampered with. And the second reason is that we were guided into the scriptures through the lens or the frame of their doctrines. And let me even tell you uh, what the Bible says about this, whether we should approach the word of God through many books. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. I encourage you to pull your own Bible, whatever uh, translation that you have. Read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 12 and 13. So it says, And further, my son, be admonished by these, he had previously talked about the wise words of pastors and teachers. Uh, and then he says, of making many books, there is no end. And as much and much study is wearisome to the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. At the end of the day, all these books are wearisome to the flesh and indeed they exhausted me they exhausted me you spent hours reading something that felt so bland because it had been watered down from the perspective of man through books jehovah's witnesses have libraries and libraries and libraries and libraries and libraries of books and of course all these have been adulterated to a line with their doctrines and keep you in check so at the end of the day what does god want this ecclesiastes 12 the, the last few chapters is talking about uh uh the the whole obligation of man that is your whole job on earth as man as god's creation fear him keep his commandments all these other books and uh, man's level of interpretation is not necessary or is not your number one source. Your number one connection to God is by first having that reverence for him and keeping to his commandments. So the commandments, they're a different thing. We know that the 10 commandments were replaced by the uh, uh, commandment of love, love God with your whole heart and love your neighbor. So with that said about these reasons, I want us to now ask ourselves, if books are not the source of our teaching or should not be the source of our teaching who then will teach us after all we're ignorant we're trying to learn right let's read the bible book of john chapter 14 to see who the bible says is our teacher and we know that in previous scriptures jesus said you should not call any other person your teacher or father except the one in heaven and then let's also see what john 14 says so Let's read John chapter 14, verse 25. 
These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all, not some things, all things, and bring you and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So the Bible says the Holy Spirit is our teacher and our reminder and our helper. So if you need to learn the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will teach you. I've made a few videos on the Holy Spirit, but indeed the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord. He's the Spirit of God and He is a person, not a thing. He speaks. Read John chapter 16 and by the time you're done reading the Bible, you will know that the Holy Spirit speaks. In many instances, He spoke. And yes, you hear people sometimes say that still small voice, that's the Holy Spirit. That is the voice of God. But let's not digress. If you want somebody to teach you the Bible, not a YouTube channel, not a, a, a book that someone wrote, but rely on the Holy Spirit. And it's about the Holy Spirit that God said, who among you will give their children snake when they ask for fish or give them stone when they ask for bread? But ask your father for the Holy Spirit and he will give it to you. It's somewhere in the Bible book of Luke. So the Holy Spirit, how you receive the Holy Spirit to teach you is by praying for the Holy Spirit. But you got to pray truthfully and sincerely, not to try and prove that the Holy Spirit does not speak. He'll never speak to you because we walk by faith, not by sight. With that said, let's move on to the third reason why it was very difficult, in fact, nearly impossible for me to believe in Jesus Christ. Now, before we proceed, I want to also address something. Uh, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, it was taught to me from a perspective that, oh, the Holy Spirit is only for the apostles, the anointed, the selected, the chosen ones. I want to emphasize that the Holy Spirit was not only for the apostles back then. No, the Holy Spirit, when Jesus said this, he was speaking to his disciples back then quite right, because you and I were not there in that particular moment. But if the Bible was preserved for you and I, his words are living words, according to the book of Hebrews. That means it's for us to also receive the Holy Spirit. Many scriptures make it clear. But I want to even use, I want to even still stay on this book of John. I want you to know that when these scrolls were written, they were not written in chapters and verses. It was just long and continuous. And sometimes in the same scene or in the same context or on the same topic or to the same audience. So staying on the Bible book of John that I just read about the Holy Spirit being our teacher, our helper, our reminder. Go on to chapter 17. I just read 14. When you get to chapter 17, I want to read to you a few verses in, in the Bible book of John chapter 17. So let's read uh, verse 18 and then we'll read 20 to 21 to see something, to see if the Holy Spirit was for the disciples back then. So let's see. Verse 18 reads, As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Now, I was taught that we're sent to preach the, the good news, the gospel of, of, of the kingdom. So if we have been sent into the world, which is the reason we carry our bags door to door, that means the Holy Spirit is also for me and everything written in this book is for me. Not just the Holy Spirit, but the admonition, the instructions, the, the hope, the faith, the everything that comes with it is for me because I was sent into the world to preach house to house. But let's read 20. To, 20, uh, to 22. I do not pray for these alone. Jesus made it clear. But also for those who will believe in me through their word. That means those who confess Jesus. Those who believe in Jesus. He is praying for them and these scriptures are for them. Okay. That they all may be one. So we are the same as the apostles that he had in that moment if you believe in jesus christ everything every inheritance that the apostles received you receive too and jesus said to them at some point you will have the holy spirit who will be with you forever that's in john chapter 14. now let's see as you father are in me 
and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. The Father sends the Son. The Son is now sending us. So all the promises that he, of course, the Son sends the disciples out into the world. And if you say you're not a disciple, that is okay. But you have no right to be preaching the kingdom of this Bible if you claim that the disciples or apostles of Jesus Christ were only those in the Bible. No. No. Which is what they, they are only Jehovah's Witnesses. Excuse me? Yet you don't even believe in Jesus Christ. But the point I want to make here is that Jesus was praying for even those who will believe in him. And all the promises of this book of John and in the entire Bible belong to those who also believe in Jesus. That is the point. Now, now that I've made that clear, I want to also read to you Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 and we'll read all the way to 22. So let's see from this Ephesians reading how <laughs> it's further affirmed by the Apostle Paul that we have the same inheritance as the disciples, the apostles, the prophets. Let's read it. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. In the Spirit. So don't tell me the Holy Spirit is for them alone. We're being built together in the Spirit. Another book in Ephesians, and I think first or second Corinthians, I think it's first Corinthians, says one spirit is the whole is the same Holy Spirit dispensing different gifts as it wills according to as he wills as he wills according to the bible one spirit one god one baptism one lord so we are one body of christ so see how i was brought up to think differently from what the bible actually teaches and finally, the fourth reason why I couldn't have believed in Jesus, but to the glory of God, to the glory of God, I came to read my Bible. I was taught that Jesus, they actually have a book uh, that says, or a publication on their library that says, Jesus, the greatest man that ever lived. So they continue to humanize him. Yes, he was in human form. But was he really mere mortal like you and I? Was he? Was he? If he was a mere mortal, why would he perform all those miracles? So here's even the scripture they used to justify that Jesus was mere mortal and that Jesus was um, the son of God, case closed. Is John chapter 14, verse 28. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I am going to the father for my father is greater than I. So I was taught Jesus cannot be God. His father is greater than him. Now, I want you to know, if you read the gospel of Jesus Christ, the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus spoke in a lot of parables and Jesus was not direct in many ways. But when you read, I encourage you to read the entire John chapter 14. Read the entire John chapter 14. You will see that they picked the most uh, I don't know, indirect comment from Jesus and used it against his, uh, and used it to deny his identity. And let me tell you what, what that place is mostly talking about. He was alluding to the fact that, yes, the father, his father's state is greater than his fleshly state. Think about it. They crucified him in flesh. But could they have crucified God in spirit? No. So he was right to say the father is greater than I because in his fleshly form that was about to be sacrificed, <laughs> there, there's, there's a level of weakness 
there's uh, 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 in in that state. That's why the flesh is it will come to pass. That's why we die. Our flesh. Jesus demonstrated it for us, but that there's resurrection, and that father state is his state. Not that God died, but the God he that was sent to us in flesh had to be sacrificed. I don't like to say died. It, to us men, the men who crucified him or who saw him crucified through the scriptures can say he died. But can you really say God died? If God died, who resurrected Jesus? So it's not a valid argument to say he died or he didn't die. No, if you understand the identity of Jesus Christ, you will know death is not a concept in the spirit of God. It's not a concept. So it's a concept that is associated with flesh, our imperfect state, which is which justifies why Jesus had to come in flesh. So when they say that it shuts down every other argument, every other reasoning, but then what does the Bible even really say about Jesus? And how do we align that with his true identity? This is the only scripture, the only quote from Jesus that they use to justify what Jesus said. I'll show you another place now. Now that we, we have this uh, 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 on, le on learning to do, let's see other things the Bible says about Jesus. And you ask yourself, which one makes sense? Is it that Jesus was alluding to the fact that his flesh is a, 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 a manifestation of God that is not as great as the spirit manifestation of God. In fact, in the Old Testament, when the father came to Moses, he told him, no man can see my face, else they perish. Because that manifestation of him is so great, so holy, so gracious. You cannot, if you come near God unclean, you die immediately. So, um, and... Uh, and that is the greatness of the father state. Now in that same John 14, where he said the father is greater than I, I encourage you once again, read it in full context. But we're going to read from verse 8 to 12 and just see something. So let's look at 8. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? <laughs> Meaning you have not known the Father? <laughs> Philip, he who has seen me has seen the Father. <laughs> so how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. I go to my Father. Hallelujah. So, you cannot after reading the context before that statement in 28 where jesus said the father is greater than i you cannot read the conversation before that and deny that jesus is also the father he made it clear to philip very clear i am your god i just came in flesh to hang out with you guys even when he was leaving them in that same chapter 4, he said, I will not leave you like orphans. That's what a father says to his children. I will not leave you like orphans. Because he's their father. But if you're still in doubt, I want to seal it with this. Let's go to John chapter 10. Let's go to John chapter 10 and see verses 27 to 30. And we'll read verse 33 and verses 40 to 42. So let's start from 27 to see. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. This is Jesus speaking. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. 
neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand and I, sorry, I and my father are one. One of Jehovah's Witness favorite arguments they will, in trying to prove that Jesus is not the father, the son is not, they will tell you if you have a son, are you your son? Is your son you? Are you not two different people? But you see, the Bible says that God has revealed his sacred, the mystery, the mystery of his identity and his kingdom to babies. Don't approach God with logic. That's what the Pharisees did. They approached the identity of God as legality, as just logic. No. God is a mystery. Can you even create water? It's mysterious. Something so simple. Can you create sand? Can you create air? The, the coming into existence of such simple everyday resources tells you the one behind it is a mystery. And his ways are mysterious. We don't know everything. Jesus said it. I, I cannot tell you all the, more than earthly things because you've not even finished understanding earthly things. So stop trying to approach heavenly topics like the identity of God with logic. No, that's how Pharisees and Sadducees approach Jesus. And that's why he said, woe unto them, that their condemnation is in hell. That they're like whitewashed tombs filled with dead men's bones. And he called them hypocrites. So you cannot, he said, Jesus said to the woman by the well, God is a spirit. You worship him in spirit and in truth and you walk by faith. So if you are just going to believe and walk by faith, everything shouldn't have to add up. Take his word for it. That's all you do. After I learned from the scriptures how these doctrines that I was raised up to believe and promote and preach house to house don't hold up with the scriptures. I really began to dig deeper and I became more curious about the word of God. My interest peaked. I started to read more and I just wanted to know God. So keep in mind your motive. If you read the Bible to uphold the doctrines that you do not know when it was set up by mere mortals in a religion from by a religion that is just about 200 years old. Come on now. I need you to go back a little further. And that is the word of God that is about 2000 years old. This is more reliable than something 200 years ago. Now, the Bible says that he who judges himself by his own standards is not wise. It's not wise. So you cannot hold on to their publications alone to evaluate your relationship with God or your knowledge of God. No. Go straight to the source. The Bible says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Go straight to the word of God. That is how you prepare to save your soul that has already been justified for salvation for you through the death of Jesus, through the death of Jesus Christ. So I want to thank you for watching. Next episode, I'm going to share more truths that I uncovered about the identity of Jesus Christ that I did not know. I had no clue about. So I'm excited to share these truths with you. And if you are just coming out, I encourage you. I encourage you to use them as just a resource. Your number one teacher is the Holy Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit and read your Bible. Don't just rely on this. But now that I've established that, I would like for you to, of course, continue to look out for this channel and support this channel and subscribe and uh, like, comment, give me some feedback. Let me know your thoughts. Is there a topic you want to hear about? I can plan for it and share what I learned about that topic uh, in future videos. So feel free to reach out and I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a blessed day. Bye.